As you're all aware, I'm a huge fan of Affinity Designer, but today we're going to be talking about five things which I feel are missing from Affinity Designer and would definitely help the whole software and hopefully in the future they'll add it in. So let's talk about it. So before we get started, trying something new with a new camera, new setup, hopefully it works out well. If you like it, let me know. Any suggestions, anything you find off, also let me know and I'll try and fix it. So first off, what's definitely missing is an automatic scale with object. Now I have mentioned this in a previous video before, but let me just point it out. So whenever you make a line or anything which has a stroke, for example, this shape here, and we can increase the stroke here, you've got the scale with object, which is by default not turned on. And in most cases, you're gonna need to turn this on. And it's a big problem when you've made a whole bunch of shapes and has so many different strokes and you've forgotten to turn it on and you have to go back and turn them all on and make sure they're all set like that before you actually scale it. Can be a huge headache and hopefully if they make it so it's default turned on, then it would be a huge help. Same goes with the effects as well. So down here in the effects tab, you've got scale with object, which again is by default turned off. If they could keep that as turned on and you can turn it off if you don't need it, then that'd be great. But right now, that's definitely missing. So next up is something that Adobe Illustrator has and that people absolutely love it, which is image trace. So what this is, is you're able to put in a PNG image or a JPEG, whatever it is, image into Adobe Illustrator and use the image trace, which the idea behind it is it would turn that image into a vector image, meaning you can edit it, edit the lines, the colors, everything like that, and make it a lot easier. In the current state, Affinity Designer doesn't have this, but it is something that a lot of people definitely want. And me personally, if it works really well, and I'm sure if they made it, it would be a whole lot better than Adobe Illustrators. So if they were to add that in, huge bonus, but right now, it doesn't exist. So on to the third thing that's missing from Affinity Designer, and that's the Shape Builder tool, which again is a huge thing in Adobe Illustrator. And I do believe if Designer has this in, it's gonna be a whole lot better than Illustrators. But let me explain. So if you have a series of circles like this, and you wanted to build the shape. What Illustrator does really well is that you can use the Shape Builder tool to choose what intersections you want to keep and what you want to discard. Right now, the only way you have from doing that is selecting a couple circles here and saying, okay, well, I only want the inside of this and using add, and then perhaps saying, okay, well, I'll use the inside of that one and then maybe that one and you've got to slowly build it up which it is possible it's just really tedious and apparently this may be coming very soon but that's just what i've heard but that is of no confirmation from anything legit so don't take it from me if it comes out great but right now i hope it does because it would be super useful but it's definitely something that we need so fourth on the list of things missing from affinity designer is exporting in psd but with editable text. So right now, if you go to File, Export, you can export as a PSD, which is Photoshop's standard file type. However, when you open this file in Photoshop, the text isn't editable. There is a workaround, which you can send it over to a separate software, which is online called, I think, Photop, where you can then save it as a Photoshop file with editable text. However, the ability to do this through Affinity Designer would be so much easier. And knowing that when you create something on Affinity Designer and you send it off to someone else who you know uses Photoshop, they can at least open the document, edit the document if they need to. But for the most part, it's the text, which they're not able to edit, which does cause a bit of an issue. There is a workaround, a little bit tedious, but hopefully, this is something that they can add in. We'll just have to see. Now, the fifth and final thing, which I think is missing from Affinity Designer is the ability to export an AI, which is Illustrator's standard file type. Now, apparently from way back when, when I did a huge amount of research about this, it's because of Adobe's license to people allowing to use it, which right now they don't allow the use of it anywhere outside of Adobe, which hopefully in the future, hint, hint, nudge nudge adobe 
kind of, you know, release it so we can use it and it'll be super helpful. So hopefully in the future, something does change with this license thing and Affinity is allowed to use it because same thing with the ability to export in PSD, but for it to be able to be exported in AI and to be sent off to someone where they can open Illustrator and have no problems editing it, it would be really useful. But I think this one is more on Adobe side of things. So, you know, hopefully in the future, they'll they'll allow it. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But basically that's five things which I think are missing from Affinity Designer. And hopefully some of those things may get put in in the future. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's my list. So if you have anything that you think is missing from Affinity Designer, drop it in the comments below. Let's see what gets added in the next update because they're rolling them out pretty consistently, which is very nice actually now if you got any comments any questions drop them in the comments below as well like i said what do you think about this new sort of angle setup that we got going on i think i might add slight differences to it in the future but we'll just have to wait and see but anyway if you want to follow me on any of the socials they are down in the comments below instagram twitter but until next time i've been brown bear thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one